Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the National Anthem of Canada, followed by the National Anthem of the USA. Jill Ellis, a very confident head coach, celebrating every goal against Jamaica on Sunday. And mutual admiration between these players, many of them teammates. You see Tobin Heath hugging club teammate Christine Sinclair as they shake hands. Here's the lineup for Canada. Our Kenneth Heiner Moeller, one change from the team which beat Panama on Sunday. Michelle Prince, who was great off the bench, comes in for Julia Grasso. And I like this change. I thought Grasso did well, but it allows you to bring uh, Shailena Zadorsky into the back line as well. So Zadorsky comes in, Quinn comes into the middle, and then you have that front three. And you look at the U.S.'s front three, I think this is a good front three too. Becky, Prince, and Sinclair. Prince has been so affected on that right side, getting the end line, not only giving crosses for assists, but also scoring goals. Alex Morgan representing the U.S. Christine Sinclair, the longtime Canadian captain. Main referee Lucilla Venegas Montes from Mexico. Jamaican and Suriname assistants, fourth official from Nicaragua. All smiles now. We'll see how that changes once the ball kicks off. Yeah, and those two know each other very well, having played for the Portland Thorns for a couple years together. And here is the U.S. for Jill Ellis, unchanged after the, her side beat Jamaica 6-0 on Sunday. And this has been Jill Ellis's number one team throughout this whole tournament. They've played together now for four games total, starting this same exact squad and you have it 
really anchored by Sauer Brown and Dahl Kemper. Dahl Kemper with the most minutes of this USA squad. And then Ertz helps that center midfielders and gives the freedom between those front three to just go forward and be creative. And that's what they do best. It was dominant and relentless from the US against Jamaica in the first half. Five of their six goals coming before the break. It was the opposite for Canada. It took them a while to get started against Panama, but they scored six after the break. Both teams already qualified for France next summer. This is about regional bragging rights and one final installment in the rivalry. The substitutes available for each side. Yeah, good. Julia Grosso, Adriana Leone for Canada. And then you look over, you got Carly Lloyd, Mal Pugh, Pugh with a handful of goals, seven already this year for the U.S., so a good player to bring off the bench. Sinclair, the 13-time Canada Player of the Year. Julie Ertz, she's really grabbed that defensive midfield role over the last year. There's Stephanie LeVay. 32 years of age. Here we go, the CONCACAF Women's Championship Final. The US in white, Canada in red. The latest installment in this great rivalry. Oh, Alex Morgan plays it to Rapino. she's offside, we are underway. And we've seen this from the US, every single match of this tournament and leading up to this tournament is right off the kickoff. Whether it be first half or second half, they're trying to get in behind by a flick from a ball from Dow Kemper off of Haran's head to see if they can thread somebody through. That time, Megan Rapino a little too over eager. LeBay with the goal kick, Sinclair forward. Rapino back to Ertz. Out in front of Crystal Dunn. She's unable to run it down and sort of lost her footing as she went past the sideline. Rapino trying to spin away. Sinclair, crafty work from the veteran. Kicked down by Ertz. This is a rivalry, and you can feel it already. There, there are some big tackles, quick in the game, trying to claim a throne when it's not yours. Everything that these two teams, you know, it's it might not mean a lot on as far as this. They're wanting to win the trophy. It doesn't mean a lot as far as next summer goes in France, but this is still a meaningful game to both of these squads, both playing very well, riding high. They want to continue that momentum. They both won their semifinals in convincing fashion. Here's Lindsay Horan, three to her right, left-footed delivery, swept the side by Zadorski. Here's Rose Lavelle, top of the box, she gives the U.S. the lead. Rose Lavelle inside two minutes. Her sixth international goal. Oh my goodness, Rose Lavelle. I think out of the three in the midfield, she hasn't quite solidified her spot as much as Haran and Ertz has. And here's why, Haran, look at that work from her. But I like this from Lavelle. She knows where the ball could potentially pop out. And that is a difficult finish. Threads it with the inside of her right, her left boot. Bay to see, as you can see, there's four defenders in her way. She can't see that ball until it's too late. That is a, a perfect shot from Lavelle. The U.S. strike first off the kickoff, looking to add another hard challenge. Alicia Chapman against Tobin Heath. Well, Lavelle's had an interesting start to her professional career, drafted number one out of University of Wisconsin a couple of years ago. She's had to deal with injuries. Her first club team folded, the Boston Breakers now playing in Washington. But as you mentioned, she has become a regular starter now for Jill Ellis. She has, I still think there's questions there in, in Jill Ellis's mind. Is it gonna be Rose Lavelle? Is it gonna be Sam Mewis? Opportunity, Morgan, top of the box, Rapino. Nice work from Lawrence, pinching in. Ertz arrived late, and now the Canadians can break. So even 
though Lavelle getting the starts, I still think she needs more of these these big time games. Does she step up in the big games to solidify that spot for her in the midfield? Because she's challenged, and that's one of the best things that's happening right now with this U.S. squad is there are multiple players at every position that can come in and make a difference. So you have to earn your spot every single week, and, and I think that's a good start. Not that she hasn't played well in this tournament, for, but for Lavelle in this game, in a big, the biggest game that they played yet, it's a good start for her. Kelly O'Hara stepped in front to win it. It's a U.S. free kick. That's the third goal at the CONCACAF Women's Championship for Lavelle. Ten different players have scored for Jill Ellis. Here comes Dahl Kemper. She oftentimes takes restarts in corner kicks for her club team, North Carolina Courage. She restarts here. Great driven ball headed out by Ashley Lawrence. And Lavelle, the goal scorer, runs it down. Moran cannot get their goal kick for Stephanie LeBay. Canada just seems a little bit like they're chasing the game right now. They can't quite catch their breath after the U.S. come out right away from the kickoff and score three minutes into the game. So if I'm LeBay, I'm slowing it down right now. I'm letting my team get up and then seeing if I could maybe pick somebody out, try to start an attack going the other way. But Canada just needs to calm down. They're a good team. They, they have the ability to play. They have to get, get the matchups right here, especially in the midfield. Great first touch from O'Hara away from Becky. Becky in retreat. And that's a challenge I think you'll take if you're Canada. Kind of a message sending tackle from a forward. And here Becky's on the wrong side of O'Hara. And they just get tangled up. O'Hara puts her two fingers up saying that's the second time already. Rapino pokes it for it, but that can galvanize the midfield and the defense if a player like Becky in there to score goals is doing that kind of challenge. It sends a message. Jesse Fleming. U.S. buzzing as they press the Canadians. Lawrence plays at PSG. On the ball now. Good composure from Canada. They break the U.S. pressure. And they actually needed that because they, there was a lot of U.S. players there. Now they get out into an open space of the field. Sophie Schmidt in field for Sinclair. Good first touch away from Dunn. Sinclair tried to find Michelle Prince on the right. Cut down by the U.S. And nearly a, a perfect step there by Quinn, too big of a touch, but just by playing out of that pressure, sometimes the best way to, to break pressure, it, it's almost like a Top Gun analogy, right? Put on the brakes and let them fly right by. When the U.S. is coming at you, coming at you, coming at you, sometimes you just gotta spin out of it, let them run by and pass through, and that's what the, Canada did right there. 57th meeting all time between the U.S. and Canada. The U.S. has won 47, but Jordan, it truthfully feels closer than that, especially over the last decade or so. And I think a lot of it has to do with the consistency that both of these squads are playing outside of their national team. They're playing in leagues where they're getting regular minutes and they're playing against each other in these leagues, whether it's in NWSL or in the previous league, WPS or abroad. A lot of the players playing in Sweden which some of the U.S. players played in as well. So I think it's just the consistency in play, but also Canada playing a lot more friendly games. So when you play more games against better op opponents, you're always going to continue to get better. So it has. The gap has been closing, and I think the Canadians feel that. And the U.S. does too. That's the, There's a reason they came out with such fire right from the bat. Moran wins another ball. Done. Back for Sauerbrunn. It's been a nice transition for Dunn. She has 24 goals for the U.S., but she replaced Casey Short and left back against France in March and really hasn't left the lineup since. Casey Short injured in that game. And, and still a question mark here. I think Dunn has done an okay job, but hasn't been challenged. There hasn't been any defensive really work for the back four, back five, if you include, include it, Alyssa Nair. So I'm looking for Canada to be that threat to try to break down this U.S. team because that's where you really see if Crystal Dunn is fit for an outside back position. Michelle Prince on the ball there. She was awesome off the bench on Sunday against Panama. We were talking during that game about the decisions for Kenneth Heiner-Moeller. 
And Michelle Prince, you almost have to play her after the shift she put in coming on at halftime on Sunday. And it's really interesting with Prince because she's played for Houston Dash this season in NWSL, not getting a lot of playing time, but yet when she gets in with Canada, she just figures out a way to light it up. And she scored the two goals in their opening game against Jamaica and then had, had the the last two appearances that she had here in the last group game and the semifinal, she's just on fire. She figures out a way to get to the end line and serve or get something on frame. So I think maybe it's a good idea to bring her off the bench, see how she reacts to that situation. But a start for her seems like it was well earned. Sour run out of the back. Here comes Crystal Dunn. The U.S. in front, one to nothing. A goal from Rose Lavelle in the second minute. I think part of that confidence, as it's a poor clearance, Rapino tries to pick it up, but good response from Kadisha Buchanan as Fumi breaks the other way. Now it's wide to Prince, toe-to-toe -to -toe with Crystal Dunn, and Ertz comes over to help. Sinclair read it well. Back for Prince. I think part of that is having Sinclair to get on the end of those crosses. You know if you do the work and you put in a good ball, you have one of the best scorers in history to finish for you. Good vision, Sinclair picks out Janine Becky, isolated with Kelly O'Hara. Here comes Becky. Long touch to the end line. Touched by O'Hara, it had not gone out. Corner kick to Canada. It actually looks like Canada is playing in kind of a flex situation where they're playing more of a 4-4-2 defensively and they leave Schmidt and Sinclair. Schmidt as more of the link player trying to get the ball to Sinclair, but with that four across the middle of the park and Becky, Fleming, Quinn, and Prince. So interesting to see if that works out for them. But here, they, they have good targets in Quinn, in Sinclair, if they can get this service right. It's like Zonal from the US with five inside the six yard box. Corners taking Quinn with a free header. Morgan's clearance came off a teammate and the US captain able to clear. And they picked out the right target. Quinn unable to capitalize or do anything of quality with that chance. But the service was in the right spot. Quinn, two goals in the CONCACAF Women's Championship. She's actually played the most minutes for Kenneth heiner Moeller. Versatile can play center back and also in that defensive midfield position. Good turn from Schmidt. Forward ball, Sinclair away from Sauerbrunn. Double team now, good help from O'Hara, but Sinclair keeps possession. Becky cannot get beyond Lavelle. And Becky a little push in the back of O'Hara, free kick to the U.S. O'Hara just talking to the referee saying, all right, that's number three now. And that's gonna be a battle between the two former teammates at Sky Blue. FC in New Jersey for NWSL. They know each other well. They probably know what frustrates the other one too. A few of the partnerships, Jordan, Christine Sinclair, Canadian captain, teammates with Lindsey Horan. Tobin Heath, two of the starters tonight, and then backup defender Emily Sonnet. So four teammates could contest one another tonight. And the list goes on as it's played back to LeBay. Offside flag was up. Restart for Canada. Well, there's Megan Rapino. Age 33. Continues to climb the charts for caps, goals, and assists. She capped in the U.S. to the semifinal win over Jamaica on Sunday. There's another person who made their case on Sunday, Adriana Leone, finishing two of those crosses from Michelle Prince. She's been outstanding this tournament. Here's the ball forward. Tobin Heath, pushed off by Chapman. And Heath fouled Buchanan as he tried to sweep it across. Nice recovery run from the left back, Alicia Chapman. Now, it was necessary as well. Canada just gets sucked in. 
by a run by Morgan. And it's a through ball just bent into the run of Heath. Does it end up with anything but a free kick for Canada? But you're, you're talking about Adriana Leon, but sitting right next to her is, is a key player for Canada, Desiree Scott, and they bring her along. She gets injured in their buildup to this CONCACAF Women's Championship. But because of the way that she leads, because of the way that she is in the locker room and the inspiration that she is, she, she comes along still and she sits on the bench even with that boot on her foot. It, it, I think it means a lot to this squad to have her here and it, it absolutely means a lot to Desiree Scott. Second minute goal from Rose Lavelle is the difference. Here comes Abby Dahlkemper from the North Carolina Courage. It's a slick field, Jordan. Rain throughout the third place match. Jamaica outlasting Panama on penalties to reach its first ever World Cup, the first ever Caribbean country to reach a Women's World Cup. Congratulations to the Jamaicans. But the field held up pretty well, but nonetheless slick after all that rain. Yeah, and it leads to good tackles like that for Mertz. Mertz picks her head up away from Fleming, able to pull it back and find Lindsay Horan. Horan with Heath. Return ball a bit heavy, picked up by Janine Becky. A U.S. throw it. Good layoff from Morgan for Horan. Tight passing from the Americans. Canadians a little slow to step. The Canadians just a half second too late on a lot of tackles on stepping, just allowing the U.S. to gain a little bit of a rhythm here. Better pressure there from Lawrence against Dunn. She closed her space quickly. O'Hara pushes forward. She tries her luck. And it slices away from LeBay's goal. You got to have a brilliant strike from that distance to beat Stephanie LeBay. Here's the strike that was brilliant though. Rose Lavelle, look at that. Between the seam, it was two backs there. One pressuring Lavelle and one a little bit off. And, and it's not a big seam there that she has to thread it to, through and she does it perfection. It's a great work by Lavelle. Heath called for the foul. Amazing she got that much power, Jordy. She's sort of standing on that right foot, almost falling away from goal, but still enough on it to beat LeBay. Because she whipped it with the inside of her foot. If she tries to go laces there, she wouldn't get the same power. But because of the swing with the inside of your foot, she could get a little bit more power to push it through that tiny opening. The U.S. starting against Canada as they did Sunday night against Jamaica. Relentless. We know the firepower of the Canadians. They struck for six after halftime, turning a 1-0 game into a 7-0 blowout of the Panamanians. Throw in for Horan. Into the feet of O'Hara. O'Hara pushing forward. Alex Morgan, long touch. O'Hara gets on the end of it. Rapino has options. Rapino trying to curl it to the upper corner. Talk about not having that much space. And Megan Rapino reacts just the way she should after this one because it was really close. She whips that one. She was one more yard away from the goal. Would have tucked it away. She gets a little chant from the crowd after that effort. 12 assists for Rapino in 2018. She leads the Americans in that category up to sixth all time in assists. Ertz, another win. How about the impact Ertz has had on this team? We saw it on Sunday. She was on the field for the first five goals, subbed at halftime, and the U.S. lost some of its energy. Julie Ertz has been, to me, the big turnaround in this USA squad from 
that 2006, dis 2016 disappointing run in the Olympics to now. Ertz was playing in the center back, lost her way in that center back position to Dahl Kemper and to Sauerbrunn, and then was on the bench. Once they reinstated her in that holding mid position, it solidified everything that the U.S. did because she holds it down for the U.S. But the amount of creativity and firepower that they have going forward, they need someone um, like a Michelle Akers, like a Shannon Box of old time, who can just sit in there and, and make everything happen. And that's what Julie Ertz does. She lets the front five be creative and it gives a different look to this midfield. So I, I, I put it all, a lot of it, on the shoulders of Julie Ertz and what she's done for this squad within the last couple years. Ertz, another win against Nichelle Prince, all the way back to Nair. Club teammates, Ertz, and Nair with the Chicago Red Stars. Ran across to her Portland Thorns teammate, Tobin Heath. Dahl Kemper, a champion with the North Carolina Courage this season. Very crisp from the U.S. Quinn inside to Fleming. Good touch away from Lavelle. She sensed the pressure. All the way back to Lavelle. Dunn fouls Prince. Maybe offside. I saw the flag come up from the assistant referee. Yeah, it was confusing because they were right there, but it was an offside call. And it is Chris from the U.S. because their first touch is leading them into the space, wherever it may be. It's away from the defender. Morgan for Tobin Heath. May have rushed herself a bit, perhaps trying to cross for Rapino. And Heath has been so dangerous. This is a player that's playing, starting on the right side. Now her and Morgan switch. She just finds that little gap, and it's a nice threaded ball through by Morgan. You're right, she had time to either drive at that near post or find Rapino. She tried the first time finish. Nice work from Lawrence to escape that challenge from Ertz. The Canadians breaking upfield, five versus five. Sinclair never seems to lose the ball. Picks out Fleming. Fleming just 20 years of age, a junior at UCLA. Zadorski with Buchanan. Now Quinn. O'Hara for Dahl Kemper. And that's better pressure by Canada trying to get the back four under pressure and see if they can make decisions from that spot. Dahl Kemper just sending it out of bounds. Good turn from Becky. She picks out the short pass, Sophie Schmidt. Fleming. Now Quinn. Sadorski over the top. Poor clearance done, falls to Sinclair. Sinclair wide, Michelle Prince, low delivery. Sauerbrunn clear. And that's what you talk about, putting Crystal Dunn a forward in that outside back position is you're gonna have clearances like that. And yeah, she has to make those mistakes to learn from them. And luckily for her, it wasn't, it didn't punish her. But that's a ball where you just have to send it away to the far sideline, keep it going in the direction that it's going and not give a second opportunity. Prince tries to get around Dunn. That'll be a good matchup all night. Prince with her speed, Dunn fleet of foot as well. Lawrence, her father is Jamaican, so. I'm sure he's celebrating a little bit. Exactly, Jamaica, the first ever Caribbean country to reach a Women's World Cup, but they're winning against Panama in the third place match. Lawrence's mother from Nova Scotia. Free kick for the Canadians. Becky, very good delivery Sunday in the semifinal win over Panama. A high line from the U.S. See if she can drop it right around the 18. That's a great ball, top of the box, headed, and a big save from there. It may have been going wide anyway, but she took no chance. Kadisha Buchanan. 
I think it's a good decision by Nair. Despite if it's going wide or not, she makes a big save here. It, it, the ball in was perfect. Buchanan makes the initial contact with the ball, but then Nair, that has to give her confidence. She hasn't been tested at all, and she comes up with the first test of the tournament in, with a big save, just pushing it wide. Corner kick for Canada, halfway through this first half. Comes from Becky. On top of the goal, goal kick to the U.S. Ugh, and that's so difficult if you're Canada because you know you're not going to get a lot of opportunities against the United States. Yes, you're going to get opportunities. I'm not putting Canada down, but you also know that some of the best opportunities you're going to get are from set pieces, and you can't give them away and give them up so easily by setting that one out of bounds. Becky's going to be disappointed with that one. We saw Kenneth heiler Moeller, 47-year-old Danish manager, appointed to lead Canada's women's team in, two th in January of this year. Previously took Denmark to the 27 Women's World Cup, 2007. Good touch from Heath. Heath, what a touch to get around Chapman. They're going to call a foul on Tobin Heath. She can't believe it. believe it either to be honest her arm got pulled back behind her because this is exactly what you don't want we saw Do Abby Dahlkemper assist like this but this is Tobin Heath highly real stuff for you are you kidding me you know if I'm a defender and you have to face Tobin Heath you're just hoping you're not in enough on a highlight reel and that play by her behind her plant foot and then wraps around the defender to get the touch that's ridiculous with Tobin Heath Pressure of Michelle Prince has given Dunn some problems here in the first 25 minutes. Ertz, good early ball. Lavelle over the top. Good cover. Kadisha Buchanan in behind Morgan. And those are the moments that someone needs to tell Zdorsky she has to calm down and just connect. Instead of playing it up, this is what she needs to do. Maybe one last touch, but just connect. Keep the ball for Canada because they have the ability to pass and move through this central third. Here's Janine Becky in space running at O'Hara. Michelle Prince. Too many white shirts to deal with. Rapino able to keep it in. Fleming back in defense. Quinn into a challenge. She got Ertz or Haran. She gets Haran. It's a yellow card to Rebecca Quinn. A tough angle for us to see that one. Here's another good look. And that is a dangerous tackle by Quinn as Haran's leg just gets planted at the wrong time. Right when that tackle's happening, you hope that Haran's okay after that one. Quinn in the book, she plays for Washington Spirit, a teammate of Rose Lavelle and U.S. substitute Mallory Pugh. Rapino drops in that service to the back post, headed down, another chance, this one for Heath. She could not connect. And the U.S. keeps the ball in the offensive half. Rapino chested down by Quinn. Schmidt. Lawrence, good composure under pressure. You can see that when she took that extra touch, Rapino just flew right by her and then she had more time. So it's a little bit of patience even in those moments of all out pressure from the United States. Rose Lavelle, the opening goal inside two minutes. Back to Alyssa Nair. Here's O'Hara. O'Hara with Utah Royals. Club teammates to Diana Matheson on the bench for Canada tonight. Good work from Schmidt to win a throw in. Schmidt, one of the most experienced Canadians, now 30 years of age, it's her 176th cap. Both of her parents born in Paraguay. And she's so experienced, not, not only does she have all those caps, but she's played in all the big games for Canada, winning that bronze medal in 2016 in Rio, being an integral part of that team. And 
this is a team filled with youth and a, a few veteran players, so they have to look at a player like Sophie Schmidt when they're looking for that experience in those big time games. She's playing alongside uh, Nichelle Prince with just 40 caps, Jesse Fleming with less than that. So this is players that Canada has to rely on to help lead them. Feels like Canada's grown into the game after a shaky start, kind of a body blow that Rhodes Lavelle goal two minutes in, but Canada's been better since about the 10 minute mark. They were chasing the game and trying to have any kind of impact, but now they've settled in. Good switch of field from the U.S. Haran wide to Heath. O'Hara's there in support. A good turn from O'Hara. Draw some contact from Quinn. Referee lets them play. Ertz wins it back. She's called for a foul. Yeah, much, much more of a foul on Tobin Heath there than that first one we saw a few seconds ago, or a couple minutes ago. She just swipes at Christine Sinclair. And for Canada, they've settled down because at some point, their midfield started to take back over. Quinn, when she got the ball, she took a touch and then she connected. And that's what it needed. This game just needed a couple connections for Canada to reinstate that belief that they're a quality team and they can go head to head to, for this U.S. team. But when the U.S. comes out with such high pressure right away, it almost makes you have to catch your breath. And that's what Canada needed to do. And now they've settled in much nicer. Canada comes in fifth ranked team in the FIFA World Rankings. Chapman, very hard challenge against Tobin Heath. She goes in the book. Heath clutching her right knee. Yeah, that was a tough challenge. Oh, and he, again, Heath's leg just planted and Chapman reckless coming in there. No intent really to win the ball. Probably lucky to just see a yellow there because she had no intention but to just come through to Heath. Second hard challenge we've seen Chapman against Heath. We saw one earlier on the sideline, really early in the game. 57th cap for Chapman. And Alex Morgan over there chatting with the referee, making sure she knows the severity of these challenges that are coming at her players. As a captain, she has to protect her team. Because there's been some dangerous tackles. That one on Tobin Heath, the one earlier on Lindsey Horan. Morgan, her 95th and 96th goals in her 150th cap for the U.S. on Sunday as the U.S. beat Jamaica. Here's a restart, again from Dahl Kemper. Again in a good spot. LeBay comes out, does not connect with it. Here's Horan, a little push on Lawrence, free kick to Canada. And LeBay, ha this happens to LeBay. We've seen it happen a few times when she was playing at NWSL. When she has to come out courageously in the mix of a big scrum of players, she's not clean. And right there, she totally misses the ball, doesn't punch it, and it's like she's a little bit timid in those big moments. If you're gonna come up there and you're the goalkeeper, come up with a big strong, your, your knees in front of you to protect yourself when you're going two fists through whatever's in front of you. They play it short. Scoot pass from Fleming for Lawrence. Becky out to Quinn. LeBay now playing for Linko Ping in Sweden. It's her 56th cap. Her fourth start in five matches here at the Kakiak Women's Championship. There away from pressure. Morgan crunching into Quinn. Morgan thought she was fouled. Then Chapman against Heath once again. Free kick to Canada. Chapman gets in the face of Heath. Uh, Heath shown a yellow card. These two players have gotten tangled up once before that big challenge from Chapman on Heath. And it looked like that was shoulder to shoulder right at the midfield. I was hoping to get another look at it. And we'll see, we might see it again at some point. 
But now that, that matchup becomes completely different because both are riding the yellow card now, so they can't go as hard into different defensive situations as they once could. Fleming runs out of room. But as we said, there's so much familiarity between these players. Chapman, an NWSL veteran, now with the dash. Heath has been in the NWSL for years. If not teammates, rivals in the league. Good dribble from Dahl Kemper just to press Canada back into their own half. Yeah, the tempo can be set by those center backs. If they play quickly, if they set the tempo, it can really do good things for the six or so in front of them. It also makes it difficult. Who's going to defend a center back? It's just a really hard part. It shifts the defense in ways that makes it difficult to regroup. Rapino nearly wins it from Buchanan. She does. She's fouled, free kick to the U.S. This is a tough game to referee for Lucilia Venegas Montez. And this is not what you want to see but out of this. Buchanan's arm is up, but Rapino's arm is straight out, and it looked like it grabbed a little bit of Buchanan's jersey there, so that's a chicken or the egg kind of conversation if you're asking me which one came first. The benefit goes to the player that won the ball, probably, in Rapino's case. Buchanan, so much experience. It's her 81st cap tonight. She's only 22. And this is a dangerous spot for Rapino. With her right foot, we saw what she could do earlier in the match. She's going to want to redo of that, bring it back down a little bit. I'm guessing right boot, boot of Rapino. She's going to try to go right up and over, back to that near post. You hope someone in the wall comes back around to the near post and follows the shot. Here's Megan Rapino over the wall. Nice claim from LeBay. It wasn't easy. Came right into her midsection, but she covered up. And the way that the U.S. set this up, they had those three players right next to the wall, and it goes right through them. It goes through between O'Hara and Ertz. It's a good job by O'Hara to get out of the way. Her ponytail nearly just flipped it at the end. But LeBay in a good spot, finds her way. And the referee has to get control of this. This is not what you want to see in this kind of game. There's emotions because these squads are... Great turn from Miranda, falls to Rapino, slips it to herself, can't get around Medisha Buchanan. But you're right, it's becoming bumper cars out there all over the field. Yeah, it's too chippy. And somebody has to settle it down from each team. Like, it's good not how you want this final to be played. Rapino, good vision to pick out O'Hara. She's been active in the first 37 minutes. That's Janine Becky all the way back to help out the center backs. Quinn goes direct. Mayor can sort out her line. So, Jordan Angela, your thoughts after 36 minutes? I think it's a lot of what we thought we were going to see high press from the U.S., uh, the majority of possession. I would like to see Canada figure out a way to settle it down a little bit. And I think that has to be an entrance of, of someone into the midfield that does just that, whether it's Diana Matheson or I like the youngster Julia Grosso when she's come in. She's gotten the ball and connected and had a, a sense of stability about her that settles the game down, and Canada just doesn't have that right now. Lavelle, audacious from about 30 yards out with that left foot that scored the game's first goal. But Lavelle's been quiet after she scored the goal, and, and this is where I think question marks come in is she needs to get on the ball more. If you're playing in a midfield that is going to help thread through those front three players. I want to see Lavelle in more dangerous places. Good ball over the top. Sinclair against Sauerbrunn. And Sauerbrunn clears for a Canadian corner. And Lavelle's defense quickly before the corner. Is she covering for O'Hara? Because O'Hara's bombing forward. Maybe some of Lavelle's responsibility is to slide out and give some cover to her right back. I think, I think, yes, there is responsibilities there, but uh, I don't think that I can finish that. Short corner taken to Fleming. 
It's wide here. Fleming back in the mix. With clearance from Morgan Sauerbrunn out to Schmidt. Now Becky, good space here for the Canadians. Morgan does well to deny the cross. Nice recovery from Lawrence. Composure from the Canadian right back. Lost by Schmidt, Rapino draws a foul. Let's talk about old alliances, those two former teammates at the University of Portland back in the day. And Schmidt knows if Rapino gets away there, the U.S. is on a dangerous break, so she just pulls her by the shoulder, slows down the play. I'm going back to Lavelle, yes, yeah, she has to do defensive duties, but but so does Lindsay Horan, and we've seen Horan get on the ball more than Lavelle, and that's just all I'm saying is, I love what Rose Lavelle brings to the squad, but I still think there's a question mark whether who's going to be that third midfielder that fills in that gap, because if you ask me, Ertz and Horan have solidified their spots, and it's just that last person in the mix. I think that competition is what has brought out the best from the Americans during this 25-game unbeaten streak. Every time they're on the ball, they play quick. They know their teammates are going to be making runs. It's the best of the best and it brings out the best. And they know there's some very good substitutes waiting on the bench, ready to take their spot. Lavelle with the switch. Here's Rapino. Heavy touch. Good win from Fleming. Been impressed with Lawrence in this first half. She's shown a lot of composure under pressure. And making it difficult for Megan Rapino. The pressure that they're putting on Rapino is making it hard for her to have the kind of impact that she's had in any of the, uh, the previous games. So Canada has to be happy about that. Here's Janine Becky. Dow Kemper's clearance out to Quinn. Here's Sinclair from 25 yards out. Doesn't test Nair. Great competitor, Christine Sinclair. I was just going to say the fire within her just shines in there. Dahl Kemper closed it well. Actually, I think it would have been hard to get anything on the frame of goal. But even when Quinn picks that ball up, I want to see her get it and play the next player and start to figure out a little bit more of a rhythm that Canada can play with. Because it's a little slow from them. They're always looking forward, taking three, four touches to find that highest pass. Can they work it from left to right and see if then that opens up that a, a little bit bigger of a gap for Sinclair Schmidt up front? We saw the competitive nature of Sinclair leaving the field at halftime on Sunday after she had just scored. Canada wanted an illegal throw in there, but no smiles for Sinclair after the half Canada had. But she was all smiles after her second and eventually leaving for a substitute. Yeah, it was a, you know, I think overall a good performance from Canada. And I think them coming out not being as dominant as they were in the first three matches allowed them to learn a different lesson is you know, games can feel themselves out a little bit differently, that you have to come with the right mentality from the get-go, which I don't know if Canada had in the semifinal game, but then they were able to turn that over and to figure out a way to one, score, and to two, change the script in the second half. So I think those are good lessons for Canada to learn. U.S. with a free kick. O'Hara to throw it in. Rose Lavelle in the second minute is the difference in this game. Her sixth goal for the U.S., her third in this tournament. Canada's best chance so far fell to Kadisha Buchanan on a header from about 15 yards out. Ertz spins away from Sinclair. Out to Tobin Heath. It's been quiet from Heath since her back-to-back -back challenges with Chapman. Nice work. Ertz on the right side. Overlapping is O'Hara. O'Hara early delivery. Morgan got there, but Lawrence in the right spot to help out LeBay. Still alive. Out from Buchanan. Dahlkemper quickly recycles it for O'Hara. Fanes across, Heath 
Stays on side, three in the area for Heath. It's Morgan, it's over the bar. Wow, on a platter for Morgan. And this is why it's so difficult to defend the U.S. because they can come at you with so many different numbers. Here's Heath on the far side, and the switch of Rapido and Morgan make it difficult for the center backs to stay tracking, for Lawrence and Zadorski to stay with those two runners, and Morgan is wide open, jumps too late. There, it's going. She's jumping up as she heads the ball, so the ball is going to continue to go up. But right before that, the, the U.S. had thrown forward Kelly O'Hara. Uh, Julie Ertz was on the wing, so how, how do you defend that? The transition and the switches within your back four and your midfield have to be so quick, and Canada doesn't have that those switches quite down yet. And Jordan, like you said earlier, when Canada wins the ball, they got a break. You're saying they're too methodical when they get it. With the U.S. putting those numbers forward, they have to go faster on the counterattack. And, and play through the pressure. I think sometimes they're looking for the counter when it's not on, and they're not looking for the counter when it is on. So they have to recognize how many numbers are thrown forward by the U.S. and counteract that. Good work from Rapino to get it in. Lawrence challenging Rapino alive. Here's Horan. Horan waiting for options. Scoops it. Morgan takes it down with the knee. And a foul against Morgan. She fouled Chapman. Just to, to have this composure here. He sets it back to Horan, and Horan thought, he thinks, oh, I'm going to scoop it to Alex Morgan on the six. Chapman getting between the ball and the player, and that's why Alex Morgan gets called for the foul there. Yeah, it goes off of Chapman, but it, she gets called for just a little too much contact pushing in the back. And there is the halftime whistle. A lively, spirited battle between two longtime rivals, two top five teams in the world. And there's your goal score, Rose Lavelle inside two minutes. It was hot from the U.S. from the get-go. They came out and they put Canada under pressure, not scoring in that initial drive, but it was, it was the second drive and Lavelle just scooped up the pass and placed it through a difficult little seam. And Canada had to catch their breath there as the U.S. was coming so strong at them. And once they did, once Canada settled down a little bit more and had the ability to find their midfielders, connect through Quinn, Fleming took a deep breath. It settled down for them a lot better, and they were able to deny the U.S. any more real dangerous chances. But for Canada, it has to be better. They're a better squad than what we just saw for 45 minutes. And it has to come from the back line, from Buchanan and Zadorsky leading and communicating with their midfielders, with their outside backs, but then movement off the ball to help the player who's going to be under pressure quickly to give that option uh, to release pressure. A lot of tension in that tunnel. Cold in North Texas, but a lot of intensity between these two sides who know each other so well. Jordan, as we see these halftime stats, U.S. controlled the majority of the possession. Three corner kicks for Canada. It's just those two shots on goal, though, and and that's really, I think, what the what Canada did well is they gave up the early goal, but then they denied a lot of goal scoring opportunities. 
14 total fouls. And really, to be fair, there could have been more. A tough game to officiate for Lucila Venegas Montes, the Mexican referee. Yeah, it got real chippy there during the middle of the, that first half. And I think the yellow cards calmed it down a little bit, actually, because now players are playing with a different incentive. If you get two yellow cards and you get a red card in this situation, you're missing your next international cap, which, you know, for these players could potentially be that World Cup next summer. So Jamaica outlasted Panama after a wild 2-2 two, two draw in regular regulation or including extra time. A penalty shootout victory, four goals to two. So Jamaica, its first ever trip to the Women's World Cup. Congratulations. First Caribbean country to reach the Women's World Cup. And it will come 21 years after their men's side reached France. A lot of red between the US and Canada on a cold night just north of Dallas. And Jordan, just two minutes in, the U.S. opened the scoring. And it was just beast mode from Lindsey Horan. She fights off two tackles. The ball falls to Rose Lavelle, and she cleans up the scraps. Not only that, but man, oh, man, she threaded the needle with this pass into the far corner. And I call it a pass because it really was. She picked her eyes up, saw that LeBay was so near to the near post, and just bent it finds its way into the side heading. I love this. Between Zdorsky and Quinn, that is not a lot of space. And she finds a way to put it home. Looked like she knew it was in too. She started celebrating right as it bounced in front of that goal. U.S. continued to press forward. Here was Morgan and O'Hara helping it to Rapino. And Rapino does not miss by much here. And this is why you have to defend them so tightly because they get a half a yard. That's a half a step on Lawrence there and Rapino almost tucks it home. Great ball for Morgan for Tobin Heath. May have rushed herself a little bit, but might have had an idea for Rapino. I think Heath there, she's been hot. She's been fighting the back of the net. And she's just trying to get anything that's going at least on frame. This was the best chance for Canada. Kadisha Buchanan looked like it was going wide, but still a testing header for Alyssa Nair. It's a really high line by the U.S. and they almost get punished for it because the ball in was perfect and Buchanan headed it right well. Then Rapino, a free kick, good cover from Stephanie LeBay. And just looking at that, a good play by the U.S., something that they work on in the training ground as the self-made wall backs out of the way. This was Sinclair getting between Sauerbrunn and Dahl Kemper. But when you see another look, it's a good first touch by Sinclair. Unless she goes through Dahl Kemper's legs there, Dahl Kemper covers well. O'Hara for Tobin Heath, three runners in the box. And it's a switch between Rapino and Morgan. And it's a good near post run by Rapino, but the fade run by Morgan is the one that Heath chooses. And Alex Morgan jumping up. She hits that ball as she's still in motion. It's hard to get that one on frame. Would have been her seventh of the CONCACAF Women's Championship. After 45 minutes, it's the U.S. leading Canada 1-0. An extra warm-up needed on a cold night in North Texas. In the mid-50s with cold rain, Adriana Leon is getting warmed up. Looks like she might be entering the team for the second half. One to nothing after 45 minutes, Jordan Angeli. Rose Lavelle, her third goal in this tournament came in the second minute, and Adriana Leon is coming in for Nichelle Prince. I think it's a good 
change for Canada because Leon gives you something different. She's going to want to threaten the back line and try to run in behind, and she has the pace to do so. But she brings a little bit more experience, too. She's played against these U.S. players many times. So it'll be interesting to see how Leon helps connect the midfield with that front line because I, Prince was having a difficult time doing that. Both Leon and Prince came on in the second half of Sunday's six, a uh, seven nothing win over Panama. And both were electric. So Leon will try to repeat that as you see Kenneth Heiner Moeller making his first call to the bench. Leon, 26 years of age. She's been outstanding, six goals. Tied for the Golden Boot League with Alex Morgan of the US. Underway in the second half of the CONCACAF Women's Championship Final. The US leading 1-0, a second minute goal from Rose Lavelle. The US looking for their fourth victory against Canada in a CONCACAF Women's Championship, the most memorable. A goal from Christine Lilly in the 120th minute in the 2006 edition. That was the last time Canada has lost in this competition. So they've been flying since then. But then, of course, they didn't have to play in the 2014 edition because they automatically qualified for the World Cup in their home country. But this rivalry runs deep. There's been many moments of the U.S. taking things from Canada, and you can see there's a lot of passion on both sides. Lavelle wanted her touch was too long. It's a deep throw in for Canada. So how do you expect the second half to go? What adjustments might Canada need to make and what might the U.S. do? I'd like to see Canada move back to 4-3-3 and, and see if they can play the U.S. that way. I just felt like they weren't getting enough going forward and enough numbers going forward in that 4-4-2 kind of switch system that they were playing. For the United States, I don't know about what else you can do. They had a good run of the play, a good run of possession. I would think I would want to get a little bit more movement from the left to the right. Try to see if you can switch the point of attack as you build up. Decide when you're going to go, not go every single time. Have a little bit more uh, rhythm to the way that you're playing. And you see Ertz there. There's just a willingness to get forward. Here she is in offside position, but she wins the ball. She plays it and she goes. She doesn't worry about what's behind her. She doesn't worry about a turnover. There's an energy she brings to her team when she releases the ball from that number six position. And like I said about the center backs earlier, it's really hard to switch how you're playing defensively. So the person that you're marking, if they run into a different zone, you have to switch. And the, what, what the U.S. do is they throw numbers at the same zone. So then you have to switch multiple people. And that's where the trouble lies. And when Ertz goes into that wide spot, it's hard for anyone to track her and defend her out there. Good position once again from Ashley Lawrence. One of the best first halves for Canada, in my opinion. PST right back. They own pressuring. Dahl Kemper, it's back to Nair. Second ball won by Quinn. Possibilities here for Canada. Leon facing up. Wide for Sophie Schmidt. Schmidt, good ball. Nice claim from Nair. She stepped in front of Becky. It did. It was a good ball. It looked hopeful at first. And if Becky anticipates a little bit more, maybe she's able to slice in front of the oncoming Nair. I just think if you're Leon, you have Christine Sinclair right there. You guys are both in front of goal. Can you guys combine within the width of, of the goal mouth, really, and see if you can get something on frame? Because we haven't seen Canada with that many shots. So the more times you shoot, the more you, have, you make the center backs for the US have to make decisions, and then you might be able to pull them apart. Moran fouls Becky after Becky won the Earth switch. Moran, the 2018 NWSL MVP. Great season with the Portland Thorns. Kenneth Heiner-Moller. 
in his first season with Canada. As a head coach, and the great thing with Heiner Mueller, and even when you look at Jill Ellis on the other side, is before they became head coaches, they were in this spot where they could learn about what the teams were about. Heiner Mueller underneath the previous coach, and then he was able to see who this team is, and when he takes over, then he can implement the same things. He chooses a couple of different things, but he knows who the squad is, and he's able to speak to each one of them individually and help them grow as players and as a unit. Here's Zadorski. Zadorski marking her club teammate, Alex Morgan, who will play for Orlando Pride in the NWSL. Back to LeBay. Quinn. A foot from Haram, but it falls right to Ashley Lawrence. Fleming. Made her Canadian debut age 15 five years ago. Second youngest Canadian ever with the national team. And she's good. She's so right foot dominant, though, that I think it puts her, it doesn't allow her to be as effective as, as she can. Even there on that ball, she tries to thread through. If she can use her left foot, she has a better angle to find her teammate. And here's Tobin Heath, well offside. I don't know what she's complaining about there. A yeah, good step from Zadorski. She took an extra step or two to make it extra clear for the assistant referee. It's been a rotating center back partnership with Quinn kind of in and out. What challenges does that present if it's not the same partnership game in, game out? I, it is challenging, but all three of the, one, the players that have played in that back line, Quinn, Zadorski, and Buchanan have all played together multiple times, so they know who they're playing next to every single time because there's been repetition. Here's Quinn, lays it off for Fleming. Buchanan, under pressure, lost it, bad spot. Here's Buchanan, Rapino's onside, but it went right under her foot. Hard crunching challenge, Ertz. Foul, the yellow card is coming. That was Buchanan. Buchanan probably just trying to make up for the sloppy touches she had in the middle of the field. And this is a big tackle and dangerous one from Buchanan there. And both players playing the ball initially, but it, it's just that extra leaving your feet from Buchanan, I think, that got her in trouble. Well, clearly, if these teams meet next year in France, there'll be some memories from this game. How many yellow cards do we have so far? Uh, Quinn, Buchanan, Tobin Heath, Chapman. Alicia Chapman. So three for Canada, one for the U.S. But if these teams meet again, there'll be some memories, not that they needed to build anymore. The 16th and 17th teams to reach the World Cup for next year's edition in France as it's restarted. And that will be a corner kick for the U.S. Jamaica punching their ticket as the 18th country with the victory tonight in the third place match against Panama. That game had everything, a two to draw, a couple equalizers from Panama. But then they win on penalties. Super sub Nicole McClure, the 28 year old goalkeeper entered on the final minute of extra time and made two saves against Panama. Here's Rapino's corner. Headed out by Schmidt. Leon will push forward. Nice layoff for Fleming. Back for Leon, but Dahl Kemper tried to sniff it out. And there's, there's where Canada, things start to break down. Jesse Fleming had a wide open Janine Becky, and she tries the harder of the two passes and tries to thread through Leon. They just need to keep possession at that point because the U.S. has already retreated, so they have numbers back in that those spots. So keep the ball, and those are little things that 
especially these players in the midfield, have to start to clean up for Canada. Good sportsmanship from Fleming after her foul of Haran. Just taking out her plant foot there. Fleming knew right away. She, she offers a, a hand out to Haran. Well, the teammate rivalries extend to college as well. Fleming, a junior at UCLA, her teammate at UCLA is American defender Haley Mace, a senior on the U.S. bench. And would have had a teammate in Mallory Pugh if she wouldn't have gone pro after deciding to forego college at UCLA. So these players, they, they know each other well, even if they're not teammates. You better believe Lindsay Horan knows who Jesse Fleming is and vice versa. A throw in to Canada, Chapman has been able to slow down Heath. There's been some hard challenges in there, but Heath, since the yellow card, since the hard clash from Chapman, hasn't had as much license on that right side. And for the US, when you know those big challenges are coming, they need to move the ball quicker and have better support off the ball. This is good. Not even bring the challenges into play. Lavelle back for Rapino. Dunn joins. A triangle on that left side for the US. Lavelle and, maybe thought a run was coming from Morgan. But that's what I'm talking about, of the US dictating the tempo of the game and deciding when to go forward or not. It wasn't on there to play a ball in the box. It, the defense for Canada had already retreated. So if I'm Lavelle, spin out, find Earth, switch the point of attack, and see what opens up in the meantime. If it's not on, then go, do it again. There just needs to be a little bit more uh, methodical work from the US and how they want to. It doesn't always have to be go forward as fast as I can. Initially, a great play from Jesse Fleming to win it from Haram, but then good work rate from Tobin Heath. And that, I think, is what is, makes this American team so good unbeaten in 25. The quote unquote flair players, the skill players like Heath, Rapino, and Morgan working back to win a ball in their own half. Oh, it's key. If you think about those center backs, when they're seeing the forwards work that hard, defending, it, it makes you work that much harder, it makes you have that much more pride. Knowing that from front to back, your guys are all gonna put in the work as Tobin Heath gets a little Megan. One of her favorite things to do. There's Sinclair. She's won it all. Two bronze medals with Canada. A 2010 CONCACAF championship. A couple college national championships. Multiple women's professional championships. And even at the age of 35, as Fleming's foul out here, she sets the tone on the standard by which all the other Canadian players must play. She's a player that you want on your team and you definitely don't want to play against her because she's a winner. Christine Sinclair knows what it takes to win. Look at her focus right there, number 12, right in the middle of your picture. She knows she just needs a moment. That's all Sinclair needs. Becky with the restart. And away by Dahlkemper. Flicked on Sinclair, dangerous. Buchanan in the area. Sinclair pushed off the ball by Ertz Sinclair cleared by O'Hara. Man, I thought she was going to do it right there. And it's not just the initial play. It's finding the ball off of a deflection, being in the right spot, knowing, just feeling the game out in that way. Leon, good work with Schmidt. Leon facing up, running at the U.S. back line, wide right for Lawrence. There's four in the box for Lawrence. It falls on this near side, Janine Becky. Back for Chapman. Chapman headed out by Haran. But back in the mix by Fleming, Dahlkemper clears. Giveaway by Rapino, but Ertz sweeps it aside. Out to Dunn, Dunn in front of Morgan. Here comes LeBay. LeBay gets there just in time, crunches into Morgan. Her shot cleared by Zadorski. What a good play by LeBay. She had to be brave, and she was. Seeing the speed of Alex Morgan come at her. A big tackle on the top of the box. But that always initiated off a defensive play from the US, 
and they transition and the player that sprung Morgan through was the outside back Crystal Dunn. That's how quick they can get at you. Here comes Leon. First time switch it looked like for Becky. But it doesn't come off and the Americans break the other way. That's where you have to have composure in the big moments. It just was a stretch there, both physically and in all reality for Leon. She's stretching her leg out to try to get a touch on it. If she can just take a touch, she's in the box, she's behind the defender, and then she has a decision to make. Do I shoot? Do I find a cross? But she's just trying to do too much too quickly there. On the hour mark, it's United States one, Canada nothing. Rose Lavelle, her goal in the second minute has stood up. Dunn gives a right to Fleming. Rapino wanted the return ball near the corner. Rapino wins it back. Morgan facing up. Here comes Lavelle with space. Wide for Heath. Closed down by Chapman. No look pass from Heath is behind O'Hara. Those two are usually right on the same page there. O'Hara wanted to keep on going, use that speed. Get into the attacking third as she plays a little ode to her old forward days. Moran. She's played in all five U.S. games in 2018. As you said earlier, her and Ertz have become two of the fixtures in midfield. Here's Rapino, has done to her right. Rapino thought she was fouled. Well, that's the freedom that the U.S. has, too, is Rapino, if she goes all the way wide, here's that threaded ball to Morgan. And that's two touches from Dunn, and then she picks up, picks her head up and has Morgan going. It's a really good ball. It comes back into a run. But I like that from LeBay. The shot by Morgan, luckily for LeBay, falls to her right foot, her unfavored foot, so she doesn't get a hold of it like she would on her left. When the U.S. start to attack, Rapino and Dunn and the outside backs have an opportunity to not only overlap, but come in that inside seam. If Rapino's all the way out, Dunn will come in that inside seam, and we just saw him get tangled up there. As Then Rapino started to cut inside. Dunn's like, I don't know what to do now. And it didn't work out in their favor. Looks like Heath got a hand to the face. Referee, blows the whistle. Take a look at Heath. Sunday, her second career brace for the U.S. national team. And I thought it was telling that an opportunity to go for her first ever hat trick when Morgan was taken down in the box late, but she, but she let Morgan take the penalty. Here's a look at it. It's just an outstretched hand of Buchanan there. Catches her. And, and what you're saying about Heath, I think it's, it is really telling of her leadership qualities because she scored two goals already in that game, but Heath knows the importance of having Alex Morgan get on the score sheet too. And what it means as a whole squad when your number one goal scorer is constantly seeing the ball go in the back of the net. It doesn't matter if it's from run of play or from a penalty kick. Heath knows the importance of that. And so and she sacrifices herself for first ever hat trick and says, go ahead, Alex Morgan. And you can see it, it helps this squad when they're all working together as a unit. And, and I think that's one of the biggest things we've seen is this is a cohesive group. There's not one player out there that's trying to go for me all the time. Morgan does well in front of Rapino. Sadorsky, good speed to beat. A veteran U.S. winger. Nice work from Fleming around Lavelle. Loose ball in midfield. Quinn does just enough. Here's Becky dropping deep to help out in midfield. Quinn spins away from her. It's nice work from Quinn. Heath wins it back. U.S. quickly to Morgan, but Fleming again winning the ball in midfield. Schmidt, Quinn, 
Out to Becky, better from the Canadians. Because they're just getting it and playing it and getting it and playing it and connecting with Quinn. I, I, I love Le Rebecca Quinn and what she can add to this team. I think she's best in that number six position where she's been playing today and holding mid. But she has to get on the ball and dictate the tempo for Canada. And when they start to build up, that's why. It's because she is getting off of her defender, creating angles so she can get it and then distribute. Quinn and Lavelle, club teammates with the Washington Spirit. Poor ball from Fleming. Arpino into a challenge with Lawrence. Quinn right to Ertz. Tobin Heath wide for O'Hara. Good work back from Becky. Canada's got to be feeling good here because they've kind of nullified the United States attack after a lot of pressure from the U.S. in the first half. They're still in this game. It's, it's a one nothing game. Canada not creating as many chances as they would like, but they haven't been giving away opportunity after opportunity like in the first half. Dunn pushing forward. Has Haran. Haran always peeking for the next option. Rapino with Dunn. Here's Lavelle. Back for Dunn. Nice saving challenge. Kadisha Buchanan. What a huge tackle. It was perfectly timed. It had to be. It was inside the box, and Buchanan just slides out in front of the ball in front of Crystal Dunn. And that's what you need to see from the from her at center back. Rapino inside Haran. Good hustle from the captain Sinclair. Tracking back. And eventually it's an offside. It's great work from Sinclair. And for the second straight game, Jordan, we've seen a drop off from the US after halftime. Different on Sunday, they led 5-0 over Jamaica as Diana Matheson begins to get loose. But the U.S. coming out of the gate strong in each of the last two games, but a different team in the second half in some ways. They have been, and it's been interesting to see. They're still fighting, but they just can't seem to find that connection, and Canada has done a better job defensively. Rapino, big save from LeBay. And one of the ways to open up this Canadian block is to have more shots like this from distance. Rapino strikes it well. And look, there's barely any bend on that ball, any movement on it at all. It's a great save by, by LeBay. Rapino has such great body control. That ball was out in front and she slowed her long steps, got her body ready to strike that well. Lavelle with the corner. Alive in the air, it came off Chapman. Sinclair clears. Julie Ertz was down. I don't know if she's gotten up yet. Or Lindsay Horan, excuse me. You can and just backed into her. Oh, and Haran's leg got planted right when Buchanan hit her. That's so dangerous. That's a couple tackles now that have just been poor timing. And everyone saw it there on, on the bench as well. That's really dangerous. And I would be upset too if I was Lindsey Haran. Yeah, it's one of those you could shot for a penalty. Buchanan could play. Ignorant and say, I didn't know there was a body there, but you have to be aware. Morgan turning, Sinclair helping out. Ertz runs it down. Sinclair wins it for the Canadians. U.S. get back behind the ball. O'Hara stepped in front of that pass and hit it for Becky. And then Fleming gets O'Hara. Jesse Fleming into the book in the 69th minute. And the tackle from Fleming just comes so close to the ball. Actually, I thought it was an extra touch from O'Hara, but it ended up being a pass. 
The ball's nowhere near O'Hara. Fleming takes her out. And this is a place where Abby Dahlkamp is so good on the ball. You mentioned her distribution with her club team, but the way she drives the ball, it has, it doesn't float so high. It just comes at this distance where it's easy to head it, and then there's so much power on it, you can redirect it. On cue, Dahlkemper, Horan nods it across. Morgan lays it back. Clear, and a collision at the top of the area. Both Fact. these teams are going to France. They're already booked their places, but it doesn't lower the intensity whatsoever. I was about to say, feisty. There's a lot of heat in this one. Again, Rose Lavelle in the second minute, the only goal. Schmidt, perfect pass just beyond Becky. And O'Hara leaves it for Nair. And Sophie Schmidt hasn't been too active in helping connect, but there, that, that was a, a beautiful ball by her. She plays it with the right bend, so, so it's coming back to Becky. And man, one more step from Becky, and she would have connected. And, and that's why you need Becky a little bit higher. Can she get higher into that seam? So then instead of receiving the ball in front of the back line, that ball is threaded through the back line and she has the ball in behind. Leon came on at halftime. She needs to be that player too. She has the pace, but there's no one stretching the back line right now for Canada trying to get in behind the US. And so the U.S. knows everything's going to be played in front of them so they can pick off those balls and go forward with numbers. Mathis Center, 200th cap on Sunday, preparing for 201. Final instructions from the Canadian bench. Good balance from Heath under pressure from Becky. Sauerbrunn out to Dunn. Fleming, too far in front of Leon. But a couple of times, Crystal Dunn has been pickpocketed in the middle of the field, and then there is, there's a huge gap at that left back position, and Canada has gone right for it. There, the pass by Fleming, too much. But that's something that Dunn is going to have to watch back and, and see how she can correct that, see if she can make the decision before she even gets the ball where she's going to go next. Rose Lavelle. Now Heath. All the way back to Abby Dahlkemper. O'Hara, under pressure, Lavelle. Contact from Chapman, but it was clean. Good first touch from Fleming, away from pressure. Quinn. That run by Leon was right, though. She's just coming around along the back line from the right side of the field. She went all the way to the left, yelling every time somebody new got the ball, wanting the ball through. That makes the back line have to stay honest. Hard challenge from Chapman again on Tobin Heath. Chapman's on a yellow card. I'm surprised here as Chapman just made the other tackle on Rose Lavelle. It didn't get called on Lavelle, but it was a tough tackle. And Chapman's on a yellow. It's just reckless from her. It doesn't have to be. Tobin, he's not going anywhere there. Just stand up, defend her. Direct from the U.S. It's over Zadorski, but picked up by LeBay, and LeBay down to one knee. Clutching her right calf. I just wonder if LeBay came up off her line so quickly that it just put too much strain on her calf. Here's the ball, it skips through. Hard to see there, and she's already not 
bringing her toe up as she steps down there. So you can see there's already pain in the back of her lower leg on her right side there. Canada already dealing to a goalkeeper injury with Aaron McLeod right before the start of this tournament. Kaylin Sheridan is the backup. <laughs> Mike check. Now Diana Matheson is going to enter for Alicia Chapman. So maybe Kenneth Heiner Moeller wants to save Chapman from that second yellow card, getting her off the field with a quarter hour to go. Yeah, I think it's a good decision because Chapman has, hasn't affected the game very much, but, but as of lately, making tackles that are just not necessary. So for me, looking at this, I, I would imagine you bring Quinn back into the back line as we get a look again at the difference in this one. Rose Lavelle. I'd imagine you bring Quinn back into the back line. Shalina Zadorski goes Ladies out and wide, and then Diana Matheson comes inside. Substitution for Canada in the 75th minute. Entering the game is number eight, Diana Matheson. Leaving the game is number two, Alicia Not only do you take Chapman off, but you bring in the experience of Matheson, and she wants to get on the ball. She's going to demand the ball every time it's anywhere near her, and she'll set the pace. So I think that'll be Ladies key for Canada right now. They have 15 minutes left to tie this game, and this is a really good sub to bring on. Great experience. Matheson's 34. Great resilience. She tore her left ACL in 2014. Then again, just a couple years later, missed the 2017 season. But back and now over 200 caps. She had a great quote in the run up to this one. She says, anytime you're talking about Canada and the USA, you're talking about two teams that want to beat each other and aren't going to give up a centimeter on the field to each other. She made light of the fact that she would use the metric measurement. <laughs> Morgan, the captain, working back to win it. But her spring ball for Heath is too long. She's witty, that Matheson. Good, good personality, good sense of humor. Adds a lot to this team, not only on the field, but off the field, too. Heath wide, Rapino. Becky nice. tracking back. Morgan, the lone US player in the box. Now two more join. Rapino waiting for a run from Dunn. Now it comes. Dunn in the corner. Has four in the box. Dunn serves it. Horan battling Buchanan. And cleared by Matheson. And put out to touch by Dahl Kemper. And it looks like with that change, as I'm just kind of looking at how Canada is setting up, they're going into a 3 5 2. And we saw them morph into this once already. This this tournament. They put Zadorski, Buchanan, and Quinn in the back. Ashley Lawrence is going to come to the left side and play a wing back. Janine Becky on the other side. They'll have Fleming, Schmidt, and Matheson in the middle kind of running the house and seeing if they can have Sinclair hold that play a little bit up top with Leon, who, who will look to break the line. So a different look from them as they need a goal here. Kenneth Heiner Moeller going to his bench for Matheson. He had a unique vantage point that epic 2002 London Olympic semifinal. He was the analyst for that game for Danish television. And now here he is six years later on the sideline giving the orders for the Canadians. He can do our job, he can do that job. What can he do? Good first touch, Sinclair has Leon in front. Matheson wide left, her first touch off the bench. Comes after O'Hara's outstretched clearance. Crunching tackle for Moran. Spills out Rapino. Rapino invites the pressure from Quinn, then pushes out to the sideline. Dunn picks up the loose ball. She pushes forward. Options to her right. Morgan giving direction. Crystal Dunn. In for Morgan. Morgan settles it. Morgan just past the far post. Nearly there for Heath. Or Morgan for her seventh. 
this is why I want to see Crystal Dunn higher up the field because when she has the ability to go one on one with players, she just scoots right by them. It's not a bad entry ball into Morgan. And it looked like Morgan wanted Heath to be there at the at the end of that cross. I thought initially she was going for the shot, but right after she saw Heath wasn't going to be there, she outstretched her arm like, come on. And, and this should be interesting. We already saw Canada expose the high pressure of the outside backs for the U.S. in that gap with their wing back. So the game should open up a lot more now. Here's Rapino near post run for Morgan. Quinn pushed her aside. Rapino. That's just very good defending from Rebecca Quinn. So, so Quinn's a stud. So uh, I think she goes underrated so, by a lot of means. She's one of the best up and coming uh, center midfielders slash center backs, I think, in the world. Because she has the ability to not only distribute, but then she can chase down and make tackles and, and plays like that. To not only disrupt the play, but make Rapino make a decision to get a turnover for Canada. Former Duke Blue Devil in her 44th cap for Canada tonight. And you know she's a big part of Heiner Moeller's plan. It's her fifth start tonight, rotating between defensive midfielder and center back. Sinclair, smart header, wide for Leon. Leon defended by two, spins around. Leon tried to return it to Sinclair, but it was just behind the captain. Man, that didn't miss by much. There's those spins again by Leon. Good vision from Rapino, but the flag had come up against Morgan or Heath. And here it is, Buchanan just stepping at the right time. And it, it does look like it's a good call there. But that spin move, the pressure from the US is so high that Leon just spins out and finds a little gap of space. It's good under pressure by the forward who just subbed in at halftime. Sauerbrunn comes away with it. Out to Rapino. Game opening up a little bit here in the 82nd minute. Rapino again invites that pressure in. Scoots by Quinn. Fleming out to double team. Here's Haran with her head up. U.S. pushing for the second. Becky Sauerbrunn. Howard Stahlkemper. Heath had Lavelle, elected to keep possession. Another offside is called. Morgan contesting that call, as is Heath. And I think Heath thinks that it's on her, but it's actually on Lavelle. And I'm surprised, as you can see here, Lavelle just slightly offside. I'm surprised Lavelle threat put this ball through to Heath after Heath didn't play her when she was clearly on. And it might have been a tough angle, but nothing's really a tough angle for Toman Heath. She can make the impossible possible. Birthday celebration at Toyota Stadium for that fan. A cold night, mid 50s. Rain throughout the third place match, an epic win for Jamaica. After a 2-2 draw with Panama through extra time, they won on penalties 4-2. Jamaica going to its first Women's World Cup. Congratulations. They follow the men's team from Jamaica 21 years later to France. Now Panama gets an opportunity against Argentina in a two-leg intercontinental playoff next month. What's best about that is Panama doesn't have a lot of games that they get to play in their home country. So now they get a home and an away series. So they get to play in front of their Panamanian squad. And I hope the whole country and the men's side all come behind this women's team because they put on a performance in this tournament that is one to remember and to, to fight for and to root for as they continue their fight for that last spot in the 2019 World Cup. 2014 field, the US, Canada, and Jamaica, the 16th, 17th, and 18th slots. So six more to be decided across the world as Matheson gets in on the rivalry. Some young goal scorers in that third place match, Jody Brown had the extra time goal that gave Jamaica the lead, then 17-year-old Lynette Sedeno 
an equalizer in the 115th minute. Brown, 16-year-old, plays high school soccer. The Monteverde Academy in Florida had a goal and an assist in that one. Direct ball over the top. Buchanan heads away. Horan picks it up. Has Morgan to her right. Rapino settles. Rapino clips it right to LeBay. Oh, I felt like she should have just one touched it back to Lindsay Horan, who was wide open there. LeBay played it, played it well, and Canada actually ended up tracking back fairly quickly and denying the options inside. Here's Tobin Heath. Morgan thought she was offside, stopped her run. Ertz was dumped after the fact by Ashley Lawrence. Coach Heiner Moeller said, we intend to bring our Canadian DNA to the pitch and put it all out there. In the run up to this one, I would say they've done that. Yeah, their DNA, there's been some bloodshed. Some tough play. But I think they settled in though. It's gotten less chippy than it was in the first half. And I think that's good because this is a quality Can Canadian side. I can't stress that enough. Heath flips it in the box. LeBay comes off her line. And I don't think the surface helped it, any it slick. The ball pops away. But ultimately, I, I want to see this matchup between Canada and US be uh, one more, a little bit based on the, the play on the field, the soccer on the field, and not so much the, uh, there was a lot of aggression and animosity there for a while. Sauerbrunn out there in front of Fleming. Hurts up field. LeBay back in the mix. Settled by Sauerbrunn. Moran first time Lavelle. Triangle defenders converge. Her outlet pass for Heath is too far. Jordan Haitema, the 17 year old, about to come on. Five total yellow cards in this match, Jordan, to reference your point about the physicality of this one. Morgan draws contact and is fouled by Buchanan. Yeah, it's been feisty. But this is a good sub. I, I like bringing in the youngster, Heidema. Had three goals, excuse me, four goals in their game against Cuba. She's tall, but she is composed, has the ability with her feet, and will bring an extra spark here. Carly Lloyd replaces Rose Lavelle. Lavelle, the game's only goal. Lloyd, best moment in her career came in Canada. The Women's World Cup final 2015 at Vancouver's BC Place, a hat trick in the first half. The U.S. winning their third star. Here's the restart. Heath sandwiched off the ball well by Schmidt and Lawrence. U.S. get a corner kick. And Fleming initially tried to go get that ball. Start. Wanted the U.S. to restart a little bit quicker. She knows every second here counts. This Canada is looking for that equalizer here late in the game, but they got to defend this, and they have to stay marked up with Lindsey Horan and Julie Ertz. The U.S. loving playing that near post run of Ertz. Heath has Rapino. Good delivery from Heath. Sinclair heads away. Settled by Dunn. Wide for Horan. First time ball. Morgan seals it for the U.S. Her seventh of the tournament. And that might clinch the golden boot.
And it's not always the initial ball that'll hurt you. When I said keep track of Lindsay Horan, I meant keep track of her. She floats to the back post, beyond the back post, and then it was Crystal Dunn. Sinclair wins the initial header. Dunn picks up the scraps, and then here's Horan, floats away. And it looks like Alex Morgan is clearly by about a yard offside. And here's where we start to talk about what's next for women's soccer. We've seen it being implemented in the men's game. And this game is completely different if there's VAR and that goal gets called back. It's still a one to nothing game. Canada gains some momentum late in the game. But there's no VAR, and it might not be there at the World Cup. They're still talking about it, still trying to figure it out. So I think that's another big talking point here after this one. We've seen a couple iffy, you know, questionable calls as of they could have gone either way. Not only was Morgan offside, Ertz was offside too. She could have affected the play in some way. Positioning of LeBay. We saw it in the third place match, a critical call that went against Jamaica. What should have been a penalty was not. It was judged to be on the outside of the, of the penalty area, a borderline call. Jamaica ended up winning on penalties anyway. But you're right, big decisions forthcoming in the women's game is Mallory Pugh preparing to come on. And I just think it's, it's just hard now with the ability for us to see so clearly a play going one way or the other, and not only the cameras that the crew called the game with, but the cameras everybody's filming with, especially on set pieces, everybody's got their phones out trying to film and see if they can get something for their Instagram, for their whatever social media it is. And so to make the job a little less difficult for the center referee, for the referees on the field. We need that extra assistant, in my assistance, in my opinion, and, and that way the game can stay the way it is. This is a one to nothing game, and Canada is still in it here. If that goal was correctly called, offside. Tobin Heath on a yellow card, exits, and second half stop. It's time. Mallory Pugh, the 20-year-old, gets her 41st cap tonight. Teammates of Rose Lavelle and Canadian rival Rebecca Quinn at the Washington Spirit. Disputed or not, it's Morgan's 97th career goal in her 151st appearance. And with that, 24 goals in her last 24 games. She is uh, on track to break that 100 goal mark pretty soon here. And she's done it so quickly. It's pretty remarkable. You can in forward. Swept aside by Dahl Kemper. It's Morgan's 17th goal in 2018. Here comes Casey Shore, the Chicago Red Stars left back. She replaces Crystal Dunn. And the reverse of this was Dunn coming on for Shore due to injury against France in March. That was a real turning point for Crystal Dunn at that left back position. Short just battling an ankle injury all season long. Finally back healthy. Great story, three ACL tears for Short. She's only 28, it's her 27th cap. Yeah, talk about perseverance. We've talked long and hard to Short about what it takes to come back from that and belief in herself and what she was meant to do play on this team was a big part of that so good to see short living out that dream as the comes off for line jordan what can canada take from this a two nothing loss to the u.s i think they have to have to come out of it thinking one they have to figure out a way to settle the game a little quicker against the U.S., knowing we're a big team that's going to come at you with a lot of pressure. So how do you solve situations under high pressure early on in the game? For me, they, they never relieved pressure long and wide, trying to get it as far away from their goal as possible. And then two, once they got the players on the ball in the midfield that needed to get on the ball, like Fleming and Schmidt and Quinn, they started to set a pace and they 
were able to get more numbers around the ball and then resist attacks from the United States and stop those attacks. So they have to come out of this thinking that they're heading in the right direction. There is the full-time whistle. The U.S. for the fifth time has beaten Canada in the CONCACAF Women's Soccer Championship. The full-time score tonight, 2 nothing. Lavelle in the second minute, Morgan in the 89th minute. Both these teams in France next summer. For both of them, it's their eighth consecutive World Cup. I think the biggest takeaway from this, everybody left that field without an injury because I think for a while there, it was getting a little too out of hand, a little too chippy. And I, I, I concerned that the health of these players was at risk. So nice to see them both kind of settle down a little bit, figure out a way to, to make some good soccer being played out of this with the, still the same intensity. But these teams, like you said, both re representing CONCACAF next summer at the World Cup, and you want the best squads there. You want, if you want to be the best, you have to be the best. And you don't want any of these players to not be there because of an injury they picked up in this game that, at the end of a tournament. Hugs all around. Celebrations for the U.S. who did not allow a goal in this tournament. Jerseys exchanged. Young Jesse Fleming might get veteran Megan Rapinos. A big moment for a college soccer player in Jesse Fleming. I love that. And pretty cool that those two could at some point be teammates as Lindsey Horan gives her a hug too. But the way that Jesse Fleming plays, you gotta, you gotta think. For years, she's been watching Megan Rapino play and, and watching what she does on the field and how she takes people on with such ease. And, and that's the respect that's there underneath it all, right? There's respect between these two squads that I think changing, sh trading jerseys is one of the, the best traditions that was started in soccer and now has found its way into other sports because it's a respect to the game first of all and a respect for your opponent and, and you get to share that in Fleming and Rapino sharing in that right now. It's the sixth CONCACAF World Cup qualifying title for the U.S., the fifth time they've beaten Canada in the final to get there. It's a celebration for Jill Ellis' side. Their unbeaten streak moves to 26 games, 22 wins, or 23 wins, I should say and three draws of the last 15 months. Well, what's next for these teams? It's a big picture question for you, Jordan Angeli, over the next nine months or so leading into France next summer. I got entranced by that. I felt like I was a part of that huddle. What a cool camera angle we got to be a part of. But going into to next summer, I think both of these squads feel like they're in a good place, and, and they should. And it, yeah, Canada's going to be disappointed with that. Um, but they're both building. I think they they have to solidify a few things. Christine Sinclair needs some more help up front. I, I think that the play on the wings for Canada has to be more decisive. We saw decisions by Becky and Prince in games that weren't as difficult as this one. But when you're playing the best of the best, are you going to get on the ball and are you going to make the crosses that will allow Christina Sinclair to score the goals. I think that's what they're going to be looking for. And they need a, another leader in the middle of the field, uh, to me. If you're looking at the United States, the, the front three, to me, are, are sold. The, the way that Morgan Rapino and Heath are playing. Still question Rose Lavelle. And not in the sense that I don't think she did well. I just don't think... I think she still leaves it up for question. She scored a huge goal today. I'm not taking that away from her, but I think Horan and Ertz have solidified that. And then who's playing left back? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the CONCACAF president, Victor Battagliani. Ashley Yorin is president. Council members, Sonia Benjamin and Carlos Cordiero. Canada Soccer Association President Steve Reed, Jamaica Football Federation Board Member Sheridan Samuels, 
and CONCACAF General Secretary, Philippe Mosio, for tonight's award ceremony. Several of the dignitaries taking the stage, Steve Reed, the head of Canadian soccer, Victor Montagliani, the head of CONCACAF. Carlos Cordero, this has been unified. These folks, along with the Mexican Federation president, helped seal the unified bid that will bring the US, Canada, and Mexico together for the World Cup in 2026. So these folks know each other well. Yeah, and talk about World Cup moment. Yeah, they know each other, but Reminds me of the World Cup this summer with the rain coming down at the end of the game and everybody celebrating here the rain coming down for this women's championship. But good to see the, all of them together. A big key to bring that men's World Cup to Ladies and gentlemen, United States, Mexico and Canada. Is the 2018 CONCACAF Women's Championship Fair Play Trophy presented by Scotiabank, which is awarded to Team USA. So the Americans win the Fair Play Award. Carly Loy will take the stage to take it on behalf of the U.S. Lloyd, a late cameo in this one. And as we see this group of Canadian, American, and CONCACAF soccer officials. The best young player of the 2018 CONCACAF Women's Championship, presented by Scotiabank. Jody Brown, number 10 from Jamaica. Well-deserved Jody Brown, a huge game in the third place match, Jordan, a goal and an assist as Jamaica reaches its first ever Women's World Cup. Uh, not only that, she didn't play in the first game against Canada, but then she came in to every other game. And Jody Brown made a difference in every game that she came in. She didn't have any fear. She went in there, mixed it up, scored a hat trick, got a big goal today, and an assist. Good to see Jody Brown, the, we the now young 16 year old, winning that. the best goalkeeper of the tournament to receive the Golden Glove, presented by Allstate, Yenneth Bailey, number one from Panama. Well, Jody Brown, one of these stars of the tournament for the young players, but Yenneth Bailey right there with her, 17 years of age. She's only been a goalkeeper for one year. Sensational, kept Panama in it early against J Jamaica tonight. I mean, you can't not help but smile when Yenneth Bailey comes onto your screen. She had a fantastic tournament and well-deserved that. She has a bright future in front of her. The top goal scorer of the tournament will now receive the CONCACAF Women's Championship, the Golden Boot. Alex Morgan, number 13, from the United States. Morgan, the Golden Boot winner, that late goal, the controversial goal, was her seventh. She and Adriana Leone of Canada were tied with six goals each. Abby Wambach won the two prior Golden Boots. Last Canadian to win it, Bertini twice in 94 and 98. Morgan's on fire right now. She's just finding the back of the net every single game. 24 goals in her last 24 appearances. The Golden Ball we is next. We now the best player of the tournament to receive the Golden Ball, presented by Scotiabank, Julie Ertz, number eight. Julia Ertz, the catalyst for the U.S. in midfield. And as we discussed in the broadcast, she's really redefined her career in this new position. And it's not a new position to her. She played there all growing up, but found her way here on the national team. And that's a big time award for her. 2017 Women's Player of the Year for the United States. And now earns this trophy best player of the tournament. Medals of recognition to honor tonight's match of A new award for CONCACAF, not given previously. Always given out, previously called the MVP. Lloyd won it four years ago. Lily, Milbert, and Bertini, the prior winners. That 
Each official is receiving their participation medals. It was not an easy assignment tonight. Lucila Venegas Montez. But in the end, she kept in the control of And now, please enough. congratulate the third place team of the 2018 CONCACAF Women's Championship, Jamaica. Biggest night in their soccer careers, Jordan. They're headed to the World Cup next summer in France. And they're soaking it in. They, they were out there with Canada and the U.S. Big smiles on their faces because it all is the same now, right? They're all going to wor the World Cup. And that's exciting for these Jamaicans. They're part of history. Their name will forever be on this 2018 squad who qualified for the 2019 World Cup in France. So uh, good for this team, played some good soccer, has some good leadership from Hugh Menzies and Lauren Donaldson and their whole coaching staff to, to Bunny Shaw and their goalkeeper Schneider and Plummer in the back line. I, I think overall, these Jamaicans have a right to have those big smiles on their faces. First Caribbean team to ever go to a Women's World Cup. Congratulations to them. Coincidentally, it comes 21 years after the men reached their first World Cup, also in France in 1998. A team effort, Nicole McClure came off the bench, 120th minute, she saved two penalties in the shootout to help deliver Jamaica a penalty shootout victory after Jamaica and Panama played to a wild 2-2 draw. Yeah, what a decision from their bench to change the goalkeeper. You must have so much confidence in what your goalkeeper can do. And McClure did just what she needed to. Granted, not two great penalty kicks from Panama, but she made the save nonetheless, and that was the difference. Now we honor the best teams of the tournament. Please congratulate the runner-ups to the 2018 CONCACAF Women's Championship, Canada. Oh, here comes Canada. They're now eight and four in 2018. They're getting some good competition. Only losses have been to Sweden, France, and Germany. So they'll head into France next year, having faced quality competition over the prior 12 to 18 months. Just so interesting to see, you know, for Canada, they're going to the World Cup. Yes, they lost this game, but in the big picture, I don't know if you can think of it as a loss. And it's just interesting to see the difference between the Jamaican team coming in front of them and then this Canada team. A mixed bag of smiles and, and serious faces. Real, like, like Rebecca Quinn there, still feeling the, the heat of that loss and what it takes. But the first person to get their medal was Christine Sinclair. And she had a smile on her face because I think she knows that as the captain, as the leader of this squad, what this ultimately means. Yeah, you want players on your team to be upset that you just lost. But this is not the game that you're playing. The game you're playing is, is next summer in the World Cup. It'll be fun to watch them play not as the host. The host brings pressure, a burden to perform. They can go to France next year, maybe as an under the radar nation. Oh, I think they'll be very well known because Canada is playing some good soccer. We didn't see the quality that I think we could have seen from them tonight, but they have the ability to move the ball around the field and to hurt you in different ways. So they'll be known, but I agree. Taking that pressure off as being the host nation, they'll be able to go there and just perform. And for Kenneth Heiner Muller, he has options. All this youth coming up, options for his starting 11. Some of the positions seem settled, but over the next six months or so, it should be a battle now, for the final spot. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the winners of the 2018 CONCACAF Women's Championship, the United States of America. Sixth CONCACAF World Cup qualifying title for the U.S. been an unblemished 15 months for the Americans unbeaten in the last 26 and they are the defending champions when they head to France next year. And, and they're playing like that. They're flying right now. I think Megan Rapino said that. It, it, it's all attack going forward. I, I still think they were 
really unchallenged defensively. Didn't have a lot of pressure, even from Canada today. Two shots on target. That's going to be the challenge, is how can they prep themselves going into a World Cup with matches that are going to challenge them defensively? Because they've got it all going forward. They can figure it out with the attacker, attacking players they have up front and in the midfield. But who's this team going to be defensively as a unit and, and as a back four in that, in, a, in a listen or two in there, or whoever the goalkeeper is at that time? This is a very thorough performance from the U.S., not giving up one goal. They've got to be pleased with the way they came and conquered. A rotation of captains of late, Jordan. It'll be interesting to see who gets to hoist the trophy. the trophy, sixth CONCACAF World Cup qualifying title for the red, white, and blue. Full-time stats, Jordan. U.S. outshot Canada 12-3. Canada not getting very many opportunities going forward. Took back some of the possession in the second half. But really, that, that full-time stat, the two to nothing, I think is still something that, in, in the back of my mind, I think that it should have been a one to zero score line. Difficult non-offside call there. And Canada's got to be good about the way that, feel good about the way that they played. Just unfortunate on that second goal. As we get into the highlights from this one, Jordan, there's a short warm up for these teams after extra time and penalties in Jamaica's victory over Panama, but the most common opponent for both of these, the 58th all-time meeting. Yeah, it didn't take long. Lindsey Horan fighting through a couple of tackles. Beast modes it there. Lavelle at the top of the box. It's a sloppy first touch. She cleans it up. And then I can't under uh, talk about this enough. The, the way that she controls this, she puts it between the seam of Zdorsky and Quinn and into the side netting. That is a top-notch strike by Rose Lavelle and ultimately the difference maker. Her sixth. International goal, half of those coming in this championship tournament. This chance by Buchanan, it was a really high line by the U.S. Becky recognized it, played a good ball in. Buchanan beats Ertz here, and Nayer had to make the save. And Heath with three runners in the box. You thought that was going to be the goal from Alex Morgan, that she would have figured out a way on this header. It's a good switch between her and Rapino. Rapino goes near, Morgan fades away far, and she just can't get it on frame. And Rapino with Morgan, and Rapino forcing maybe the best save of the night from Stephanie LeVay. We didn't see too many quick strikes from the U.S. They were trying to get in behind all the time, and this just gives you something different. It makes the defense have to pull out and create some gaps in the back line. Dunn pushed forward in the second half, directed by Morgan. And afterwards, you can watch Morgan's hand go up like she's looking for Heath here. Like, you can get there, can't you? Off the corner kick will this lead to the second U.S. goal. And Haran, you have to keep track of her. It's not just the first ball, it's the second here. Dunn finds Haran on the far side, and at second look on this, first it looks like a phenomenal goal by Morgan, but watch this. As Haran plays it, Morgan is about two feet beyond the ball, which is really right in that case. The ball's the offside line, and she ends up getting the goal. It's not called offside, and the U.S. take it two to nothing. 
97th career goal for Morgan. That gave her the golden boot, her seventh of the tournament. And the U.S. lift their... My name is Matt Peterson. The U.S. wins the CONCACAF Women's Championship by a full-time score of 2-0.